and uh we're gone how do you do i'm doing good how about you um i'm doing pretty good you know i got back from like a big old long car ride yesterday so that's fun had some more time to work on these lovely lovely slides mm, good stuff yeah because today we're going to be talking about the california state water project and other stuff so you got a problem you got you got like a bunch of people who live in a place where there's no water um it's it's a hell hole uh some people call it los angeles but you know you got people who live there there's like no fucking water so how are you going to get water from a place where there is water to places where there aren't water it's a very good question and pipelines answer. are an answer there's many other answers and that's what this episode will be about and it will also be about this um martian landscape called the central valley and this kind of phallic object someone drew right there hmm. oh shit all right you know i'm gonna i want to i want to figure out how to like um get the writing tool so i can john madden up the place oh, yeah yeah um maybe another time but so we got some news and this is why i still wanted to record so late because i wanted to add the slide so it looks like the 2021 2022 wet season started off with kind of a bang with an atmospheric river and bomb cyclone which is what this is uh, this is what uh the map of the u.s looked like um last week this is what it looked like an hour ago so you got a huge bomb cyclone that basically came out of nowhere and it started a huge atmospheric river a pineapple express no less uh, on the central coast so san francisco is getting like a whack ton of rain right now and much of the sierra nevada is getting some snow so that's cool nice good start to the wet season but a lot of this rain is causing like devastational flooding because no one was really expecting it yep when well, unique conditions are in full swing yeah it's because the soil is like super dry and it's not going to readily absorb water it's just going to be runoff it's going to be um i mean you already see it. There's already flooding in the Bay Area. Yeah. But um, that it's does kind it. of highlight the biggest problem of the area, which is that even if you do get rain, there's no guarantee you'll be able to keep it through the whole year. Yeah, and, you know, the Bay Area has the Crystal Springs Reservoir, which is, like, right on it. I think you've, oh, you've never played Watch Dogs, too, so you don't know where it is. But <laughs> it's, like, right next to San Francisco, and that, that would capture most of the runoff. Um, also, there's the uh, George W. Bush sewage treatment plant, which would capture some of it, too. The George W. Bush sewage treatment plant? Okay, so in San Francisco, there's the sewage treatment plant that it, it has, like, a generic name, but there was a ballot measure in 2008 to rename it to the George W. Bush sewage treatment plant. That's um, such a meme. The Democrats didn't really like it because, you know, the sewage tr treatment plant serves, like, a very important civic utility. That they didn't feel would do it justice by naming it after that man. It's so hilarious, though. It it it, it was pretty funny. Um, it never went anywhere, but that's what everyone calls it. No, oh, that's a shame. Yeah, I wanted to do an episode on it, like water recycling in general, and that was the name. <laughs> but so, what is the deal with canals? And Jerry Seinfeld oh, is looking really real rough. Now. Yeah, Jer Jerry Seinfeld, like he's he's looking bad. I I did the snip like super small this time. So that's a problem. But what do canals do? They bring water from one place to another. They get ships stuck in them. Yes, they do. They do. Um, just wanted to let you know, to everyone who's making inappropriate content about the Ever Given, oh. that ship is three years old. <laughs> you, you're in so much trouble. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. So that's what canals do. I bet the first person to go through with their ship after the Ever Given got unstuck had a really tough decision to make. It'd be so funny. It'd be they really the funny. the opportunity to make the funniest joke of all time. <laughs> I saw that tweet. Yeah. Yeah, my favorite thing is, like, where where is she now? Good question. Probably just back in operation. I don't know. Wasn't it, Were they, like, stuck in the canal for a while because, like, they wanted them to pay? Yeah, something happened because it didn't. Weren't there like two guys with their um who got arrested their, uh, or something? Digger, like their earth mover just at the ship in the canal. 
like getting out this massive cargo ship. It was like an Earth mover and like a couple other stuff, and like they were worried they were like gonna have to like unload the ship. Yeah, which is like impossible to do in like the middle of the desert. But we're not talking about those kind of canals because those canals have wars and stuff. But this canal, well, several canals makes up the California State Water Project. And in the words of former Governor Pat Brown, it is to correct an accident of people and geography. (laughs) So it was proposed in 1957, and they wanted to dam the Klamath River up here and make a 15 million acre foot reservoir. And the biggest reservoir currently in California, Lake Shasta, is 2.5 million acre feet around that. I think it's like three or whatever. But so this river isn't really dammed for substantial municipal water use. And most of it just goes into the ocean. And this is some of the wettest country in the state. So it might have been a good idea. But, you know, the problem is you would basically destroy any fishing um, and all fish populations. Because when you build a dam, you're basically stopping fish migration. Yeah. You you're know, um... you... It's, the, it's kind of the equivalent of building a giant wall across a migratory flight path. Like, there are some ideas to do, like, that fish cannon. And, like, some dams, like the spillways, do allow them to get across. But, you know, most uh, most dams are using hydropower. That's so not going to be very friendly for fish. Any fish that does get in there is going to be turned into bits. <laughs> Which is it's not super helpful for spawning. But... The Klamath River remains relatively undammed, and, like, at this point in the year, it's more like a, well, I mean, like, a few weeks ago, it's basically, like, an indolent trickle. Like, when I was there this summer, uh, the Klamath River, like, it was just, like, it was, like, it was, it was, like, a drainage ditch. Yeah, I went a few years ago, and, uh, it, there was very, very little rain, I think. What um, year was it? Ah, jeez, I want to say... 2015 or 16 oh yeah yeah you're not getting much there we went um we got off the flight and we were talking about all the green hills in you know that area of california and they were all just that same shade of pallid yellow just dead grass all over the place so that's mostly what they look like uh you got i'm assuming you flew into san francisco yeah so it would have been north of marin county so uh solano or no sonoma county those hills, mostly cattle ranching, they, they're they only green for the winter, and then they're just dead the entire rest of the year. I think regardless the impression of was that the last time anyone I was traveling with had been to the Bay Area was during the winter. I'm assuming the last time they were there was like the 90s when everything was just wet. That too. <laughs> so uh, that mega reservoir on the Klamath would also like flood a bunch of Native American um, like villages and whatever um but don't worry pretty much every other reservoir did that too so this led to the creation of the california department of water resources in 1956 and its whole purpose is to get water from the wet parts to the dry parts in the southern part of the state um loss and the main thing is that northern california didn't like this because northern california and southern california hate each other Because they thought it would be a boondoggle to steal their water. And the city of Los Angeles didn't want it either uh, because they thought it was going to be a ploy so they would give up their rights on the Colorado River, which they held very dearly. Hmm. And remember, um, Southern California uses like all of the Colorado River's water. Yeah, by the time it gets down to Mexico, it's just a series of irrigation ditches. Yeah, it's Chris McCandless couldn't find his way to the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, it kept on getting lost. Yeah, so as we showed right here, um, the State Water Project is kind of five different zones. So you have Oroville, Delta, San Luis, San Joaquin, and the Southern. So the Oroville Field Division, the crown jewel of the State Water Project in general is Lake Oroville, um, you know, the two and a half million acre foot reservoir that East Coast news outlets love to report on. And Lake Oroville captures a lot of runoff from the uh, Sierra Nevada mountains. These are just some tributaries of it. And it kind of impounds the Feather River down here. It's kind of the start of the state water project and it captures most of the water. And there's the Sacramento River right here. 
some more bits about, um, about Orville because I didn't look at my slide notes. Um, yeah, it's the largest dam in the U.S. Right. I'm sorry, tallest. My bad. And it also has an 819 megawatt um, power plant. My favorite part is that it provides the drinking water. It, sorry, I'm sorry. It um, provides about 6.5, uh, 6,500 6, gigawatts of electricity, but it's also the single largest user of electricity in California and consumes 500, um, sorry, oh my God, I don't know how to spell, 500, 100, or 5,100 gigawatt hours. So it's a very small surplus because you're pumping water over mountains. Yeah. Which is like kind of hard to do. More or less, it just takes up a bucket of power and gives back a drop. Yeah. And you, then you get the problem how in the middle of the in the middle of the summer or in the fall, when you don't have much um, in the reservoirs, so you're not really releasing much, so you can't use as much hydropower. You've built up so much infrastructure that's dependent on hydropower that you need to start having rolling blackouts. Yeah. And then we get to the Delta Field Division. So this is the San Joaquin Delta, and it's kind of the heart and soul of California's water and California's water arguments. So most of the water from Lake Oroville either irrigates farmland further north, or it goes to the North Bay Aqueduct, where it feeds the hungry mouths of people who live in the Bay Area. And there's main there's two main sources of water to the Bay Area. You have the South Bay Aqueduct, which comes from here, and that gets into the Hetch Hetchy Aqueduct, which we'll get to later on. And most of the water going to the California Aqueduct, which is you know where Southern California gets most of its water, is just straight up pumped out of the Delta. And the problem is. The California Department of Water Resources has to play a super dangerous game where if they pump too much water out of the delta during high tide, there's a bunch of saltwater intrusion that can destroy everyone's crops. But if they don't do enough, but they do, if they don't draw out enough water, um, people in Southern California don't get water. And if they draw out too much water, a bunch of fish get killed. So they have to play that game basically every day and how much water do they need to pump out I wonder how the uh, I wonder how the minimum wage worker feels knowing that the fish population and the population of Southern California, along with the agricultural economy of Northern California, is just all in their hands. Yeah, uh, it's not. Unfortunately for them, they're just the ones pushing the button. Um, you know, the they're people. The, they're also inevitably the ones that the CEO blames whenever. Oh yeah, they they get blamed. Yeah, like those you, are the ones that get sacked. Like so you the overdrew the Delta. The now there's no fish. So now here's the San Luis region. So this is just kind of the California aqueduct keeps going. And interestingly enough, this section of the California aqueduct between the Bay Area and the San Luis Reservoir, there's nothing in it right now. Hmm. Really? Uh-huh. Um, there's no flow rate through it. All of the flow rate is coming from the San Luis Reservoir, which, as you can see, isn't doing too well right now. So big old reservoir. And so you know how last week we were talking about here? No, that year we were talking about the wet season and the March miracle, where this yes. whole town basically was going to die if that wet season wasn't good. After that wet season, they like, yelled at the governor until they built uh, this fancy um, diversion of the California aqueduct so they could not die if there wasn't good rain that year. Um, but yeah, it just keeps flowing down south. And then more about down here. So they had to divert all that water, which we talked about earlier. And then here's the southern field division. So this is the Edmonston pumping plant, and this is probably the largest single user of electricity in California. This pumps water about um, like several thousand feet up a mountain. Uh, so, and then from there, it just either goes south to uh, Orange County 
or it you know goes here to Los Angeles, and then I can go into that funny reservoir with the million balls in it. Oh yeah, I remember that from on the news years ago. Yeah, so the shade balls like kind of help with evaporation, but their main purpose is like I don't know. It was it, it's something where if it's if the water is exposed to sunlight, um, a chemical that uh, like Los Angeles puts in the water to like stop something um it turns into something toxic if it's exposed to sunlight which was probably not a good idea but there you go now you have to have a bunch of balls over there which was it really a good idea to introduce that (laughs) to an ecosystem yeah it um i don't feel like those are actually contained well they're filled with like they're partially filled with water so they're not really going to go anywhere yeah, they're not going to blow away in the wind, but, like, it's still a dam. Things go places. Like. Yeah, it's interesting. I trust that uh, the hydrological experts are, they aren't just lying to us. I mean, why else would they want that in there? <laughs> they're partnered with Big Ball, uh, Big Ball Pit. Big Ball Pit. So one of the main problems you have along the whole of the California aqueduct is evaporation. It's passing through the Central Valley. Its climate is basically semi-arid desert. Um, So you're having a lot of evaporation, which is like a huge loss to it. Um, I think we might have talked about this before, but putting solar panels over it, over the, sorry, over the um, uh, aqueduct is something that's gaining a lot of traction in California's legislature. Mostly because you stop evaporation, you keep the solar panels cool, you protect the water, and you generate a lot of power. Um, So this is the defunct Delta Tunnel. And this was a project proposed by uh, past governor, uh, Jerry Brown. And what he wanted was, so you know, you have Lake Oroville and the super wet North Coast. And he wanted to get that water to the south because mainly that flows into the delta or is used for farmland or goes to san francisco um so it's been fooling around really ever since the state water project was a thing to have some type of diversion to go around the delta so you could get water there now that's all well and good except uh mr jerry brown who i've shown upside down and this kind of funny photo with like a very young gavin newsom who kind of looks like ben shapiro I don't know. If you take away the hair. It looks like a mix of Al Assad and Patrick Bateman. Huh. That's before he got his spray tan, so. Oh, he has a spray tan now? No, he doesn't have a spray tan. It just looks like it. Oh, weird. So the problem is they want to build this tunnel 150 foot deep under wetland. So, I mean, I'm assuming the engineers got it figured out how to prevent it from shifting around. But what they didn't figure out was um, all these fault lines. Oh. Well, that's why uh, there aren't many tunnels in, this, in the aqueducts. Um, there aren't many tunnels because you have a bunch of faults, and faults hate tunnels, but it's pretty easy to fix something that's on the surface. You know, you just block off that section, and then you can get to work on it. You don't really have to worry about, oh, shit, this is underground, like 150 feet. How are we going to fix it? Hmm. But, yeah, in 2016, yeah, he wanted to try to allocate $25 billion to getting these tunnels done. Um, But, you know, environmental concerns, blah, blah, blah. Jerry Brown's main reasoning for it was back during that drought, they were drawing so much water out of the Delta that they were destroying the fish populations there. So he was like, if we could drill under it, we could get water from the north to the south without having to pump it out of the delta. Which, you know, was obviously a good idea, except for the fault lines. Yeah, I mean, if they weren't in wetland, on a fault line, and didn't live... So many things worked against their plan, but it sounded good. It did sound good. I think uh, Gavin Newsom came in and like shut it down. So the main problem with this, and this is the end of the state water project slides, is 
there have been really besides you know minor capacity improvements um this project was more or less finished in the 70s the late 70s and california's population has about doubled since then that's a problem infrastructure doesn't have a very good tendency of scaling well with population and the good part is that farmland really hasn't changed like farmland demand really hasn't changed that much over that time um so most of the demand stayed constant but the you know residential demand obviously increased yeah so oh yeah so the central valley project so while the california state water project is mostly meant to get water to southern california for use of people to drink the central valley project is mostly for you know farm farmland in the um northern central valley and it starts with lake shasta lake trinity here they are north of redding this one isn't as interesting because there's not as many like cool engineering things they were either taking advantage of rivers that already existed like the sacramento river and then just building up a dam there um or they were just either making small improvements to the uh, landscape as it was and yeah, a lot of these projects were built off of data from the wettest century in recorded history. They were running off the assumption that it was always going to be that wet and that they were always going to have that much water. So all of this infrastructure and plans for urban development were planned around there always being that much water. But there wasn't. And as things get drier, reservoirs like this, like they're the new norm. Like reservoirs are, are not going to be that full very often. It's more so going to look like that. Yeah. I don't know. Anything else you want to say about water project before we do some miscellaneous? Um, I think you summed it up more or less just that uh, there's not a lot of room for new in infrastructure to be made. And the stuff that was made was made with the assumption of fewer people in California during a wetter mm -hmm. time. Yeah. So the Bay Area gets its water from something called the Hetch Hetchy Aqueduct, which besides having like an extremely funny name, um, it starts in Yosemite. So most of the runoff is going to the Hetch Hetchy Reservoir and it flows through this kind of cool looking aqueduct, mostly by gravity. And then it comes down here, either goes over the bay and goes to yeah, so here's Crystal Springs Reservoir. So I, as I was explaining earlier, so pretty much all the runoff from the mountains here in um, San Mateo County can just go in there. Yep. Yeah, cool. So about six, 260 million gallons of water a day go in there. Mm, big stuff. Yeah. So yeah, not much to say about that one. But yeah. what there is a lot to say about is environmental destruction. So we already established that dams, even if their spillway like is terrifying like this one in Lake Berryessa. Oh, that's, I, I've seen that in way too many ads alongside the doctors hate one, like, doctors hate this one fruit or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's like, you'll never believe this lake. No, it's Lake Berryasa. And homeowners in Illinois can do this thing to lower their taxes by 80%. Yeah, just drill a big old hole in your dam. I mean, you wouldn't believe where Octomom is now. <laughs> I, I don't know why they chose this to be their spillway. I think they were just like kind of like fucking around with different types. And they were just like, hmm, this terrifying one that like. I want to know, like, how many kayakers, like, die in that thing. They do a little bit of trolling. They do a little bit. Because, like, they do have, like, a buoys, um, like, around, like, further back to be like, don't go here, dumbass. But I, I really do wonder, just, like, either by a dare or by, like, them falling asleep, how many just go in there? Because I have seen, have you seen the, like, video where the guy, like, puts a drone in there and, like, throws a phone down there? Oh, really? Yeah, it's that dumbass YouTube channel that, like, destroys all their phones. I've never seen that before. Yeah, so they have a drone, and they drop it in there, 
Um, there's no water flowing in there, so it's like in the summer. Um, but it's like fairly easy just to go to the bottom base of the dam, like walk in the spillway, and just like peep in. Oh, weird. Yeah, there's a ton of graffiti down there. Yeah. So it's yeah. like on the left, you've got a lot of the fish population declining. Yeah. So this is just some various fish in California, and this is the their fish population this is this is some multiplier i don't think there's only seven delta smelts in california in 2015 if i had to guess it's <laughs> it's over a certain area they're probably doing um mark catch and release yeah there's, on, there's only seven delta smelts <laughs> the seven yeah. um what well, it's pretty obvious trends they show it here um like high 90 percent changes from the 60s to 2015 and most of that is because in dry years um they pump water from the delta for the california aqueduct and it's a huge hazard to either spring run salmon or any other fish that you got in here and the bank's pumping plant is the biggest pumping plant in the delta and as it pulls water from the sacramento river southward across the delta it disrupts that normal flow that salmon go to the pacific and it pulls them into the pump that's no good. Um, yeah, and, like the fish population is super hotly constructed. So like hotly debated and it's kind of like we and that's what was fuel to start the idea of the peripheral canal. It's all these fish are dying mostly because of these pumping plants. So how can we get water either under or just around the delta to avoid that? Yeah. Yeah. So always got to mention it the change in climate and population so where's the population centers you know you got some in the central valley but the lion's share of the population of california is in the bay area and los angeles and then you know my favorite graph about drought area in california increasing over time i think we need to like get a union for uh graphs that show either rainfall or drought area in california because they're on here so often yeah but I just got an important text. So after there was like a super dry year in 2012 and that drought started for like five more years, the Department of Water Resources uh, announced that the state water project would be making zero deliveries that year. <laughs> and that, oh. was the, that, that was the first time in the, in the history that it happened. Granted, there was more snowpack than they originally thought. So they were able to make 5% of their deliveries that year. <laughs> um. So this is an interesting thing. Are you ready? You're going to hate this. Oh, what is it? So the disparity cost to the project's various counterpart constituents have been a frequent source of controversy because although the average cost of the state water project is about $147 per uh, acre foot, agricultural users um, pay like way less than that. The Kern County Water Agency, which is the second largest state water project holder, they pay about $45 to $50 per acre foot of state water project water, which is mostly used for irrigation. The Metropolitan Water District of Southern California, which is the largest holder, pays $289 per acre foot. So this means that cities are subsidizing the cost of farm water. We couldn't, ha we couldn't stand to let our itty bitty baby farmers get hurt. I... You were right that I was going to hate that because I do hate it. Yeah, even though like cities are the main reason why the state water project was made. Again, to correct that error of humans and geography. Like my favorite thing that happened was during like the first few years of the state water project like functioning, they didn't finish all the reservoirs yet. So farmers got like way more water than they like thought they were going to get. And Cal the state warned them that like, once we finish these reservoirs, you're going to get like way less water. You're going to get your the share that you were meant to get. So when you have all this extra water, don't plant orchard crops that always need this much water. Plant like alfalfa hay or something that like needs a lot of water, but it's only for like one or two seasons. Pretty much all of them planted orchards. <laughs> and like almond orchards. So then they got like half that water. Um, in the following years, and they had to take all those orchards down, which is like 
loot, which like you lose a lot of lump, a lot of money by destroying an orchard. Yeah. Yeah. So now that we know, wow, that was a quick episode. It's a lot of work and research for such a quick episode. Damn it. But so now that we know how water gets to Southern California, let's let's talk about what Oprah does with it. Oh. <laughs> Oh, we're gonna, man, we're going to get into classism, are we? Oh, boy, will we ever. So next week, we're going to talk about um, the quagmire that is Southern California water policy, which is why does Oprah have all this green grass? All that and more on the next episode of yep. Cal Fire Crackpots. Any shout outs before we go? Let's see. Um, That's a good question. I usually don't have anything, but uh, I guess I'll continue that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have any shout-outs either. Um, subscribe is my shout-out, and if you do, I'll shout you out. No, I won't shout you out if you subscribe, but I'll just shout out, yay, you sub. Um, so anyway, I'm going to a haunted house. Oh, good stuff. And my boss, I'm a bike mechanic, and he was telling me a story that he used to go to haunted houses and throw eggs at the people who worked there. <laughs> and that, like, he, like, like one of them would always, like, run and find their manager and then, like, kick him out. That's such a boomer thing to do. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Throw eggs at people until you get kicked off the premises. Yeah. The, the, no, the real boomer thing to do is like the two old men who look like exactly the same who came in like five minutes before close and stayed there for like a half hour. Oh my God, right? It, it, it is. It is. These are the joys of working in retail. When I worked at the hardware store, I used to work at a hardware store. Um, there was a person who had, um, had come in probably less than five minutes before closing and looked at every single pack of seeds on like the seed carousel seed a week carousel. before like we got all the winter stuff in and she was like are you getting any daisies are you getting any lilacs are you getting any peonies and i'm like half those things are bulbs my favorite thing to do but, is like like what you should do is go over to the pos terminal clock out like curse them out and then clock back in <laughs> yeah but uh they kept on asking about stuff and you know, basically, like, at the, at a certain time in the year, we stop ordering stuff because we don't want we don't want to sit on, like, 80 bags of mulch or 100 bags of seed over the winter because they're not going to sell. They're going to be taking up space for other merch. And merch. merchandise. Yeah, I know. But she, w- she kept on asking, and I'm like, well, you know, if you order – what was it like 20 or 24 bags of seeds of the same type will justify putting you on will call and getting in another box of seeds but they were like annoyed with that answer and also like the things they did bring up to the register were all things where they were unsure about it asked me about it i reassured them that they were good and then they put them back because they deemed my opinion not valid. Nice. See, we're too poor to go to therapy, so that's why we're that's why we do this podcast so we can vent. Why spend sixty dollars an hour for a therapist when you can just say it is what it is every single yeah, we, Saturday? We, we, when you can vent to your friends on a podcast and um not get paid for it. Um yeah. That's about it for me. Yeah. All right, lovely. Did I stop the recording? No, I didn't.